Question, will the president's plan to forgive up to $20,000 in debt for some students survive court challenges? Professor Josh Blackman with the South Texas College of Law is joining us live now to talk more about the debt forgiveness. Uh, Josh, good morning. First of all, websites are crashing because students, you know, want their loans forgiven. This is not a done deal, though. What are some of the legal challenges that you foresee happening? Well, keep in mind that for the past couple of years, Congress has debated whether the law should be changed to cancel student loan, and Congress has not taken that step. Rather, President Biden chose to turn to executive action. He acted by himself, um, and he said that I now have the power to forgive student debt. It's not clear that he has this power. Okay, explain the White House's argument, because they're leaning on the pandemic here, specifically the HEROES Act, but it's tricky territory with questions about authority, as you mentioned, being raised. So after September 11, 2001, Congress enacted a law called the HEROES Act, and this law allowed the Secretary of Education to, um, to cancel debt uh, that was due to a national emergency of some sort. And I think at the time, everyone understood this law to mean September 11th, which was a huge catastrophe across the board. We are now two decades from 9-11, and the Biden administration is looking to this 9-11 era law as a justification, saying, okay, we have a new emergency, which is COVID. Uh, the pandemic is now two years old, um, and this is going to be the basis for canceling the law. Um, and as you might recall, the president and also President Trump have postponed student loan interest for nearly two years during the pandemic. So the question becomes, is this 20-year-old law relevant for COVID, and does it provide the president the power to uh, cancel, you know, $500 billion of, of student debt? And another issue, Josh, may be finding someone who is harmed by the president's action and, and would then have legal standing to sue. D do you foresee that being loan companies, anybody else that would be harmed by this action? In our system, it's not enough to say, oh, that's illegal. You can't just go to court because you don't like something. You have to be injured or harmed by it. This is what's called legal standing. Um, so there are a couple of different plaintiffs who might have standing. One of them might be a loan company who is annoyed that billions of dollars of their loans are being canceled. Um, another possible plaintiff is a person who's ineligible for it. Uh, there are thresholds of income. If you make below $120,000 or so, you're eligible. What happens if you make $130,000? You cannot get it. So it's possible that someone who might be ineligible for the loan could be a plan to challenge it and then say well by the way it's illegal uh, so there are lots of ways to get to court but who's going to pick up the slack is it going to be the american taxpayer who will have to pay and and all of a sudden that goes into a fund that takes care of these loan forgiveness programs you know money doesn't appear out of thin air right there's debt that's on the books if that money's wiped out, that could lead to inflation, that could lead to other economic consequences. Uh, but ultimately, the, the American people pay for this, perhaps not directly, but uh, uh, this is half a billion dollars of debt that will simply just vanish from the books. Josh Blackman, South Texas College of Law, talking about the tricky territory with the debt forgiveness program. I'm sure we'll call you back as we get closer to the timeline here where people can apply in October. Thanks so much, Josh. Thank you.